Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. All thanks and praises due to Allah. We seek His aid and we seek His forgiveness. We seek refuge in Allah from the evil of our own souls and our evil actions. Whomsoever Allah guides, there is none who can misguide Him. And whomsoever Allah misguides, there is none who can guide. I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah alone without any partner whatsoever. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is his slave and messenger. O you who have believed, fear Allah as he should be feared, and do not die except as Muslims in submission to him. O mankind, fear your Lord who created you from one soul and created from it its mate, and dispersed from both of them many men and many women. And fear Allah through whom you ask one another and the wombs. Verily, Allah is ever watching over you. O you who have believed, fear Allah and speak words of appropriate justice. He will then amend for you your deeds and forgive you your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and his messenger has certainly attained a great attainment. Verily, the most truthful speech is the speech of Allah. The best example is the example of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Every newly invented matter in the religion is an innovation. Every innovation is a misguidance, and every misguidance leads to the fire. Now, first of all, I'd like to thank those who have given me the opportunity to convey the uncreated word of Allah and the words of Muhammad wasallam upon the understanding of the Sahaba for the past few weeks. Now, notice how everything that we teach in Islam has to be upon the understanding of the Sahaba. And for this reason, we cannot cherry-pick verses from the Qur'an and cherry-pick hadith from the Sunnah and interpret them upon any man's understanding. For then a man to go and take these evidences, take them out of context and go and kill innocent people in, su in suicide bombings. Or go and use these hadith to make unrestricted takfir upon people. Or take these hadith and twist the interpretation so much that they then seek refuge in other, other than Allah. This is not the context. Everything has to be done in accordance to the sunnah. And this is why when we look to see what is the solution for the problems that are, that are facing this ummah, and indeed there are many, we return back to the way of the sahaba. We see how did they deal with things. How is the solution upon their understanding, not upon your understanding, not upon my understanding, not upon every Tom, Dick and Harry upon the street, but the same way the Sahaba did things because they have a proven success rate, a proven track record. So to proceed as Allah says in the Quran, Allah has promised, uh, promised those amongst you who believe and do righteous good deeds that he will certainly grant them succession to the present rulers in the earth as he granted it to those before them and that he will grant them the authority to practice their religion that, that which he has chosen for them i.e. Islam and he will surely give them in exchange a safe security after their fear provided the believers worship me and do not associate anything in worship with me but whoever disbelieved after this they are the rebellious and they are the, the disobedient to Allah. So this verse is the manhaj. This verse is the methodology to success. This verse is the methodology to victory upon the earth. Success in the earth and fruitfulness in our religion and in our dawah. In order for us to reach this goal, or first we must ask what is this goal? This goal is two things. Success in the akhirah. Success and might and power and victory and justice in the Akhirah and the ability to reach Jannah in the Akhirah. So it's twofold. We have two goals, success in the earth and success in the Akhirah. In order for us to reach this goal, we must implement the ayah that I have just mentioned. It must be implemented. We can't take our own whims and our own desires when Allah has told us the, the methodology, the manhaj for success. This ayah was implemented entails complete servitude in Allah and this is to free ourselves from shirk from the ascription of partners with Allah to free ourselves and free our religion from, inner, from religious innovation from things that have crept into the religion that are not part of the religion and to free ourselves and our communities from filthy crimes and filthy sins as Allah says in the Quran so that they worship me without ascribing partners to me Note that this term worship, ibadah, is a general term and it includes all that Allah loves and all that Allah is pleased with. 
This includes the affairs of the dunya and the affairs of the akhirah. There is no separation in our religion between belief and the practice or belief and action. Rather, our religion is belief and action together. And this is a dictate of the Quran and the Sunnah. So if you see a generation, if you see a generation of believers that is in a state of humiliation and a state of hardship, then know that they have not fulfilled what Allah expects of them. I repeat that again. If you see a generation that is in a state or a generation of Muslims, of believers, that is in a state of hardship and humiliation, then know they have not fulfilled what Allah Azawajal expects of them. On the opposite, on the flip side, if you see a generation of believers who have been given might in the earth and been given victory and been given success, know they have fulfilled what Allah Azawajal expects from them. And this relies upon the majority of the believers. This relies upon the majority. And the proof for this, the evidence for this, is the hadith of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in which he said, Woe to the Arabs from a very near calamity. Today a hole has been penetrated in the wall of, of Gog and Magog. And he signal, signaled with his hands like this. He said, today a hole has been made in the wall of Gog and Magog. So Zainab bin Jahash said to him, O Allah's apostle, shall we be destroyed even though there are righteous people amongst us? The messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam responded, yes. If the evil ones become numerous. This related in Bukhari. So notice from this hadith that there were right, righteous people amongst them. But the Messenger وسلم, said, if the evil people, if the people are, are, are drowned in desires and sins and are not following the religion and the evil has spread across the majority, then all of you will be all of you will be destroyed. All of you will suffer from this calamity. So to prevent this calamity from ourselves, to prevent this calamity from ourselves. We must pre prevent, prevent ourselves from evil, and to be saved from Allah, we must limit the evil amongst ourselves. So our call, our dawah, our call is to call from the, to fix or to rectify from the bottom of the community to the top. Not the other way around. We hear people today saying the reason for our disgrace, the reason for our humiliation is because of the ruler, is because of this person. It's not blaming or not taking account for themselves. When these proofs clearly signify that the problem, the cause for all our distress is the majority, is the believers in general. It's you, it's me. We are the problem and we are the cause for the distress that the Ummah faces. The Quran gives us a striking parable in which we must take lesson from and, 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 and exemplifies what I've just been speaking about. And this is in the story of Musa alayhi salam. Bani Israel, their leader was who? Their leader was Musa alayhi salam. Their ambassador was Harun. So we have two of the best men amongst mankind, Harun and Musa. Yet even, the, even though, even despite the fact that they were the leaders of their community, what happened? They were overcome and they were forced to wander the desert. The Bani Israel were forced to wander the desert for 40 years, even with the best of rulers. Why was this? Because the people, the nation were upon sin and transgression. The people were disobedient to Allah. They did not follow the sunnah of Allah. So what happened? Many years later, the, the, the believers were eventually able to enter the Holy Land under a man known as uh, Yusha ibn Nun. So we must ask the question, was Yusha, was he more righteous? Was he more virtuous than Musa and Harun? Like, of course not. Of course not, of course not. He, the reason why the Muslims were then given the permission to enter the Holy Land when Musa or after Musa and, Yah and Harun had passed away was because the people became cultivated upon Tawheed, upon the oneness of Allah and they become cultivated upon the Sunnah, the Sunnah of Allah, the Sunnah of His Prophets and Messengers. So our call, I repeat it again, must be from the bottom of the communities to the top. And this was the sunnah of all the prophets and messengers. The tyrannical leaders that are above us are a punishment to the nations. As the salaf, as the sahaba, as those who followed in their path would say, as you are, a similar people will be placed above you. As you are, a similar people will be placed above you. So to try, or so to, so to change the leaders, to overcome our oppression and to overcome our situation, we must start by changing ourselves and those around us due to the statement of Allah. 
Verily, Allah does not change the condition of a people until they change their condition within their own selves. Allah did not say, Verily, Allah does not change the condition of a people until they change their rulers, or until they change, they change their governments, or until they change so and so. He said, Until they change their own condition within themselves. How many people do we see today calling for the implementation of Islamic law, calling for riots on the street, calling for protests on the street, yet them, their own selves, are not following the Islam? Them, their own families, and their homes are not following Islam. In the words of Sheikh Al Albani, rahmallah, he said, The majority of those who shout for an Islamic law in the world have neither an Islamic law in their homes, in themselves, in their sons, in their daughters, in their wives. Those who have nothing cannot give anything. Those who have nothing cannot give anything. So let us take a look to ourselves. See how the manhaj of Allah differs from the manhaj of the disbelievers. The disbelieving socialists and liberalists have developed these methodologies, these riots, these protests and so on and so forth. And by Allah they are more harmful to the Muslim society than, than, than beneficial. We find that all they do is weaken the society. And an example I'd like to give in recent affairs, look at Egypt. We have, the way the Ikhwan have come into power is the way they have left power. The way we, we, you know, we pray Islam comes into power, but the way they entered into power is the way they left power. They did not follow the sunnah in implementing leadership within the nation. And what has happened? Now a worse leader has been put into power. A worse leader has been put into power. And what do we see in the news yesterday? Supposedly 50, 55,000 mosques are due to be closed. SubhanAllah, the matters have been made worse. Even if the intentions were pure, for a deed to be accepted in Islam, there are two parts. First, there must be ikhlas, there must be sincerity that this deed, this ibadah, this act is purely for Allah's pleasure. And secondly, that it is done in accordance with the sunnah, with the sunnah, not an innovated act. This methodology in Islam is different, it betters society, and as a result, Allah gives us victory. Allah gives us victory. We don't try by our own hands and fail. Allah will give us the victory. So know that the tyrannical rulers are a punishment for our sins. And this is why we have been commanded with patience. Tyrannical rule is not a result of our negligence in participation in democratic elections or our, or our supposed laziness in, in engaging in, in voting or elections. This is not the case. Because this is why we find many a time a, a ruler is removed in a method in opposition to the sunnah, and Allah Azawajal replaces him with somebody worse. And this has happened many, many times in history. Many times in history, ya ikhwan. And then what do we find? Allah turns the hearts of the believers against each other, and then the believers quarrel, and they fight for power, and for wealth, and for money. And this is the, the cause for the weakness of the ummah, or one of the causes for the weaknesses of the, weaknesses of the ummah. As for the manhaj of Allah, we do not look at the punishment, but rather we correct ourselves, knowing that it is a result of our filthy sins and crimes and those of our communities. And as a result of shirk and religious innovation and all that that transgresses the boundaries that are set by Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We can continue to find our own solutions. We can continue to pull our own solutions out of our pockets, but by Allah, Allah will only change our condition until we change our condition that, that resides within our own selves. Then we will be fit to receive the reward and promise of the verse we started with. And that reward is righteous rulers, the authority to practice our religion, and safety within the land. Safety within the land, safety within the Muslim, Muslim lands. We won't have to worry that our sisters are being raped, our children are being massacred. Our men are being killed and put up against shooting lines. We won't have to worry about these things because Allah will give us victory when we give him and his religion victory. Practically, we can take this as an example. Let's look at more examples. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam implemented this practically. When he made Hijrah and the first battle, of occur battle occurred, which was the Battle of Badr, Allah gave the Muslims a great victory. Why? on account that they fulfilled what was required upon them and they were firm upon the worship of Allah. As Allah says in the Quran, and Allah has already made you victorious at Badr when you were a weak little force. You were weak and Allah gave you victory. 
So fear Allah much that you may be grateful. Look how the Sahaba were so small in number, yet Allah gave them victory due to their istiqamah and their tawheed and their firmness upon the obedience to Allah and His Messenger. However, what happened in the next battle? One year later, if we look to the battle of Uhud, the Messenger وسلم, gave the important task of protecting the army from the rear to a small group of companions. This group disobeyed the Messenger وسلم, by moving from their station prematurely and the Muslims were defeated and the Messenger وسلم, was almost killed. So notice now this was a small act of disobedience. The believers, they saw the booty and they acted. So what did Allah say about this in the Quran? When the companions asked, why were we defeated? Why were we defeated? Allah Azawajal revealed the verse, and Allah did indeed fulfill his promise to you when you were killing them, meaning your enemy, with his permission, until the moment you lost your courage and fell disputing about the order. And fell disputing about the order of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Like today, we dispute about every order. We don't hear and we obey. We hear, Allah says, you hear and you obey. We don't do this today. We dispute about every order. And disobeyed after he showed you of the booty which you love. Among you are some that desire this world. Among you are some that desire this world. And among you are some that desire the hereafter. Then he made you flee from your enemy that he might test you. But surely he forgave you and Allah is the most gracious to the believers. So we see that this one act of disobedience led to the defeat of the Muslims. Let us take a look at our condition today. Our state of great disobedience and great defeat. This is the sad reality of our negligence in the religion and negligence in following the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Let us look at another battle, the battle of Ahsab, the battle of the trenches, where the Muslims had corrected themselves. They had implemented Tawheed, they had implemented the cultivation upon the religion. Now know carefully that despite the Muslims were being oppressed by their attackers and the polytheists came from all directions to Medina and the Sahaba were in a very, very weak state, Allah gave them a mighty victory. As Allah says in the Quran, O oh, you who believe, remember the blessings of Allah upon you all. When armies came to you and we sent upon them a strong wind and troops that you cannot see. Or how about the conquest of Mecca? When the Messenger وسلم, was on his way to the Battle of Hunayn with companions who had only recently accepted Islam. So they were shaky in their religion. They were firm upon the principles of the religion. Now look, look at this, listen to this, this hadith very, very carefully. The companions on their way to this battle, they came across a tree known as Dat and Wat. Inshallah, I've pronounced that correctly. Now, Abu Waqid al Laythi said, we went out with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam on the campaign to Hanayn while we had just left disbelief for Islam. So they're still shaking in their religion. The, pa the pagans, they had a sidra, a, a low tree called Dat and Wat where they would remain and hang their arms upon it. So they'd hang their weapons upon this tree. When we passed by it, we said, O Messenger of Allah, won't you make for us Another that and what, just like their that, that and what. So the companion said, Oh Allah, oh Allah's messenger, make for us a tree like they make their tree. Make for us a tree like their tree to hang our swords on for good luck and for, for strength and so on and so forth. The messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Allahu Akbar, by the one in whose hand is my soul, verily these are the ways of the alien nations. You have said exactly as the Bani Israel said to Musa alayhi salam when they said, make for us a God just as their gods. He, Musa, meaning Musa, said in response, verily you are an ignorant people. Certainly, or Muhammad sallallahu alayhi continued, certainly you will follow the ways of those who went before you. In this battle, the Muslims were almost defeated. Allah Azza wa Jal said in the Quran, Truly Allah has given you victory on many battlefields and on the day of Hunayn when you rejoiced at your great number but it availed you not and the earth vast as it is was straightened for you then you turned back in flight. So Muslims were victorious in Badr and Ashab when they had complete faith and obedience in Allah. <laughs> However they were defeated in Uhud when they did not follow the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and were almost defeated in Hunayn for two reasons. First of all, 
the disease in their heart of being pleased and amazed with themselves. As the verse just, I mentioned just said, they were pleased by their big numbers. They were surprised. They thought we're going to win this battle, no problem, because of our numbers, because of the numbers amongst us. And the second reason for requesting a tree to hang their swords upon. Notice how these are both issues tied into aqidah, tied into belief and the belief the Muslims should not have. <coughs> May Allah Azza wa Jal guide us to the straight path, guide us to the religion that pleases him and makes us firm upon it, upon the understanding of the Sahaba. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. We send peace and blessings upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and all those who have followed in, in his way to, until the day of judgment. Now, this is an affliction that is upon much of the Ummah all across the world. That we separate belief and practice of belief whilst claiming we want a Muslim state. How can we receive the fruit of a tree without planting the, the tree in the first place? How are we going to receive the, the sweet fruit without first planting the tree? This is foolishness. Know that to be a nation who Allah gives might to, we must fulfill the characteristics that Allah wants from us. And that is that we establish Tawheed and the prayer and we give Zakat and that we enjoin the good and forbid the evil as Allah orders in Surah Al-Hajj. But how many times do we see our brother or our sister or our family member or the brother in the masjid transgressing against the law of Allah? We see them doing something which opposes the, the legislation. We see him doing, calling upon other than Allah. We see him with small, even the, the lower, the, the smaller commandments, like keeping the isbal or growing the beard, yet we do not enjoin the good and forbid the evil. Automatically, by not commanding or advising our brother, we are automatically stating that we do not, we do not want to be amongst the people who rule, who rule the world. We are saying, according to this verse, that we don't want to be amongst the people who Allah's character, Allah has described as having the characteristics of being in control and in might and in success and having safety and security in the land. We don't want it. These are the instructions of Allah, the creator, the sustainer, the controller of all affairs, the reliever of distress, the one who gives victory and the instructions of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa who did not speak from his desire. These are not the words of a politician, or a, or a philosopher, or an econ economist, whose words can be accepted or rejected, or a lawyer. These aren't the words of any of these people. These are the words of Allah and His Messenger, the one who created all of us from absolutely nothing. So why are we going to turn to the solutions of these politicians, of these, these false... Uh, um, uh, these people who, who don't have a, 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 an understanding of Islam, why are we going to take the interpretations when we have the clear instruction in front of us? Hence the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, It is very near that the nations will gather against you like hungry eaters calling to a plate of food. The Sahaba asked, O Messenger of Allah, will we be small in number? He replied, No, you will be large in number, but you will be weak like the froth and scum carried down by a torrent of water, and Allah will remove the fear of you from your enemies' hearts and cast al-wahan into your hearts. The Sahaba asked, O Messenger of Allah, what is al-wahan? He responded, the love of this life and the dislike of death. Now there's some important notes to take from this hadith. First of all, the Sahaba asked, will we be few in number? Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, we will be disgraced, we will be humiliated. He said, will we be few in number? Because the Sahaba knew that even in their state, the Sahaba were very few in number. But what happened? They overtook the world. Few in number, but they overtook the world. So they were shocked by this statement. SubhanAllah, how can the Muslims be overthrown? How can they be overcome when the number is meant to grow? When the number of Muslims is meant to grow? And look at us today. 1.6 billion people strong and we are... We are food on a platter. Our nations are food on a platter. We, we let the shaitan into our own homes on the television screens and allow them to preach to our children through the television. And then we claim we want Islamic State. We claim we want to help the Ummah whilst contradicting every law that Allah gives us. The second point to make, the Messenger of Allah, وسلم, he mentioned, like the froth and scum 
carried down by, by a torrent of water. Now, if you see a stream, if you see a torrent of water, what happens? Upon it is that the, the stream is firm, it's powerful, it's pure, but it carries above it, on, the, on its surface, it carries leaves and, and rubbish and, and, and piles of junk that nobody wants. That's useless, it's worthless. It's there flowing amongst the stream, and what happens? The people, they want the water on the bottom. So the Muslims today, we, re we represent this rubbish that is on top of the water stream. We represent this useless rubbish that flows and people want to clear it out the way so they can get to the pure water. And there's things in common. With all these things that are carried by the water stream, what do they have in common? They're all very light, they're all found on top of the stream, and they're all useless and significant and they have no common good. Look at the state of the Ummah today, Ya Akhwan. Large in number, 1.6 billion of us, and our blood has become the cheapest blood in the world. Whose fault is it? We're quick to, quick to blame others, but it's, as I said, and I'll, I'll repeat again and again and again, it's our fault. We all contribute to this Ummah. In another hadith, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, If you begin to deal with one another in al ina which is a type of deceptive riba-based transaction. Now, just an important note to make on this, we find that a large percentage of so-called Islamic finance in the world today is far from Islamic finance. It is the same as the people or as the children of Israel done when they were told not to, not to fish on the, on, the, on the day, on the particular day. And what did they do? They left their fishing nets out the day before and picked it up the day after, trying to deceive Allah. So on a side note, much of the Islamic finance today follows this same principle. So in effect, it is worse because we're trying to deceive Allah. We're trying to get something that is halal and make it appear haram. Even worse. So if you deal with, with one another in this type of transaction, and you take hold of a cow's tail, and are pleased with cultivating in the land, meaning you're pleased with the dunya, the religion khalas, you're pleased with the dunya and the affairs of the dunya, and you leave off jihad, which comes in many forms, Allah will place on you humiliation in the land, and it will not be lifted until you return to your religion. Allah will place humiliation upon you in the land, and it will not be lifted until you return to your religion. Allah will place humiliation upon you in the land, and it will not be lifted until you return to your religion. Repeat it three times, Ya Akhwan. So humiliation is from Allah, and the only one who can lift humiliation is Allah. And this will only be done whilst or when we return to our religion. And what is our religion? Our religion is the religion of the Sahaba. This is the religion of purification. To purify the religion of shirk, of false narrations, of religious innovation. Our religion is to purify the belief from these weak narrations and to establish ourselves firmly upon the exact same religion as the Sahaba. And only then Allah will give us victory. As Allah says in the Quran, Allah will give victory to those who give victory to Him. Verily, Allah is mighty and powerful. We ask Allah to guide us all to the straight path, make us firm upon the way of the Sahaba, make us, give us uh, thabat and istiqamah in the religion, make us firmly uh, principled and to forgive us all of our sins and make us amongst the righteous in Firdaus. Subhanaka wa bihamdika, shadu wa la ilaha illa ant, wa staqfuraka wa tuba alayk. الله أكبر الله أكبر شهد أن لا إله إلا الله شهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله استوى استقي معتدلوا سد الخلل فلن تجاب straight on the lines Allahu Akbar Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawmiddin Iyaka Na'bud wa Iyaka Nasta'in اهدنا الصراط المستقيم 
صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين إن الله لا يستحيي أن يضرب مثلا ما بعوضة فما فوقها فأما الذين آمنوا فيعلمون أنه الحق من ربهم وأما الذين كفروا فيقولون ماذا أراد الله بهذا مثلا يضل به كثيرا ويهدي به كثيرا وما يضل به إلا الفاسقين الذين ينقضون عهد الله من بعد ميثاقه ويقطعون ويقطعون ما أمر الله به أن يوصل ويفسدون في الأرض أولئك هم الخاسرون كيف تكفرون بالله وكنتم أمواتا فأحياكم ثم يميتكم ثم يحييكم ثم إليه ترجعون هو الذي خلق لكم ما في الأرض جميعا ثم استوى ثم استوى إلى السماء فسواهن فسواهن سبع سماوات وهو بكل شيء عليم الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد الله أكبر